you can see me and uh, hear me properly and uh, we'll continue with the uh, today's part Okay, so uh, I, I, I thought that let's start uh, discussing implants because we saw this time also there were some questions from implants and implants always had been a kind of dilemma for most of you because it's something that's been not taught to us during our undergraduate days. So I'll be covering about implants in different uh, sessions. So today would be the first session where I would be introducing the basic principles, basic concepts, basic components of implants to you. Okay. So first of all, what happens when a tooth is extracted? When a tooth is extracted, the bone around the tooth is known as bundle bone. This bundle bone is very thin and it is basically supplied and it basically uh, it, it when the tooth is extracted the osteoclastic cells they act on this bundle bone and the bone starts resorbing so it is very important whenever a tooth is extracted either a socket preservation means there should be some bone grafting that should be done in the socket or just after extraction of the tooth, the tooth should be replaced with an implant. So when a tooth is replaced when an, with an implant, it, it provides a kind of message that the tooth provides to the bone. So now that implant is providing the same message to the bone that you don't get resorbed. Your, the bone is required and the bone does not remodel or resorbs. There is a principle known as Wolf's Law of Transformation. According to this principle, when a, whenever there is uh, the tooth is present, there is a message that the bone receives and the bone does not resorb to this level. But when the tooth is extracted and the message is gone, so the bone starts resorbing. Now that implant, again, according to this Wolf's Law of Transformation, when you are extracting the tooth and you are placing it with an implant, so again that message goes to the bone and the bone does not remodel to the level that it resorbs significantly. Okay, so that is why to prevent this bundle bone, that black portion of the that I marked on the picture, this bundle bone to prevent this resorption, it is very important that when a tooth is extracted, that extracted site should be replaced with an implant. Okay. Now let's discuss about the different components required for implants. Number one is an implant. So your implant is basically a hollow structure. It is hollow from inside. So it means when you place an implant in the patient's mouth during the healing phase uh, to prevent food particles and saliva from going inside, you need to cover this implant with something so that the chances of infection are not there in that implant. Okay, so what happens? Thus, this implant it comes with a component that is known as a cover screw. So that this is known as a cover screw. So what happens? This cover screw basically comes over the implant and that is tightened that is tightened that will prevent anything from going inside during the healing phase of that implant so the cover screw they may, they may ask you what is a cover screw the role of a cover screw is to prevent anything from going inside the implant during the healing phase during the time when that implant is osseo integrating with the bone so to prevent anything from going inside this cover screw is given so if you picture a picture a diagram milta hai, and they ask you what is this 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 is a cover screw and <clears throat> the role of the cover screw is to prevent anything from going inside this implant 
which is a hollow structure okay now your implant can have internal connection or it can have external connection they can give you two pictures like this the first picture is internal connection and the second picture is external connection by internal connection i means i mean implant ke upar kya aata hai abutment this abutment will go and seat inside the implant so this is internal the abutment will go and seat inside the implant so this is internal connection and when that implant <coughs> when that abutment seats on the outer side of this implant can you see the hex are outside so when the abutment seats on the outer side of the implant that is an external connection so he may give you this picture and may ask you is it uh, an internal connection or an external connection so the connection is between the implant and the abutment okay so this was the cover screw that i was talking about so they will put this cover screw over the implant so just to give you an idea this is the implant that is placed now over an implant this cover screw is tightened okay so second picture i am holding this cover screw now like we uh, screw any nail in the wall or screw in the wall we require a screw driver similarly for an implant if i want to tighten anything over my implant or if i want to loosen up anything from my implant so i need a screw driver the screw driver for my implant is known as a hex driver <coughs> the screw driver of an implant is known as a hex driver so i am right now holding this cover screw with a hex driver i'll take this hex driver hold this cover screw and move it in a clockwise direction so that this cover screw tightens over my implant and i'll give the sutures then and i'll send my patient back okay so what is this this is a normal process by which an implant is done um, after 7 days when the patient will come to me i'll cut the sutures and i'll send my patient back home i'll recall my patient after 3 months next question they may ask you after how for how many months you have to wait for your implants before the final prosthesis so if you get options like 1 month 2 month 3 months 4 months 5 months so the recommended time period is 3 months okay now see the fourth picture last picture so after 3 months when the patient will come to me the site will be completely healed i will give one incision after 3 months now i'll go in a reverse manner i will give one incision okay i'll reflect my flap <coughs> i can see that cover screw i will unscrew my cover screw i'll unscrew my cover screw i'll remove it again with that hex driver so the component that i am using for loosening or tightening anything over my implant is known as a hex driver they may ask you in this mcq in a question what is that component that is used for tightening of anything over my implant that is known as a hex driver okay now patient will come to me after 3 months so i'll take one x ray to see if that implant has integrated this is a hex driver so they will give, give me with this picture and ask you what is this this is a hex driver so the screw driver for my implant so i'll take this covers acha now the next thing after my uh, implant is exposed so I just come to this picture after i have removed this cover screw and i can see my implant that is exposed now i need to put something over my implant so that that soft tissue does not cover it completely because can you see it here the cover screw is completely covered by i'm sorry can you see here the cover screw is completely covered by the gingiva but now after 3 months when i have exposed my implant removed my cover screw i need to put something over my implant so that the gingiva does not 
cover it completely. So the next component that I require is after three months when I have removed this cover screw, I require is known as a gingival former or a healing cap also known as a healing abutment. So gingival former as the name suggests gingival former the component that shapes the gingiva the shape of the gingiva the component that shapes the shape of the gingiva so they may ask you what is the role of a healing cap so it helps to create an emergence profile around my gingiva so can you see it it helps to create an emergence profile around the implant <clears throat> So now once this emergence is created, now my implant is ready for the next step that is impression. That is impression. Okay. So this is how the emergence should be formed. So this emergence should be formed from the healing cap or a healing or a healing abutment. This is the emergence. So they may ask you what is this and what component is used to create this emergence so answer would be gingival former or a healing cap or a healing abutment okay now this healing cap is placed so they can ask you this picture when you see something protruding out of the gingiva this is a healing cap when you cannot see anything and it is covered by the gingiva it means the implant is covered and there must be a cover screw in it not a healing cap so when you remove this healing cap, you will see the soft tissue healing properly and it is now ready for the next step that is impression making. Now in an implant, there are two techniques of impression making. Number one is open tray impression technique and the second is closed tray impression technique. So let's come to both the techniques of impression, open tray and closed tray. So, if you see both the impression techniques, first of all, for making an implant impression, the component that you need is known as impression post. It is known as impression post. So, impression post is also known as impression coping. It is also known as impression coping. Now, they can ask you this question. They will give you these two pictures or any of the one pictures and they will ask you a concy impression post so if you give if, you, if they give you this first picture which i am uh, right now pointing out this is a closed tray impression post it is a closed tray impression post the second impression post with a longer screw so how do you differentiate it this one has a longer screw this has a smaller screw so the one with a longer screw is known as open tray impression technique open tray impression technique so there are two types of impression post open tray and closed tray so it means there would be two types of impression technique open tray technique and a closed tray technique okay so let's first discuss about open tray technique so first after three months we have placed that healing abutment now once that healing abutment is placed and the tissue around it has healed properly so now what i'll do i'll take my hex driver i will unscrew my impression post i will unscrew my impression post oh sorry unscrew my healing cap <coughs> I'll take my open tray impression post and I'll place these open tray impression posts in my patient's mouth. So, I have open tray impression post and I have tight hex driver se implant. Ke tight kar diya. Now, I'll take a plastic tray. So, I place these open tray impression post. Can you see these are open tray? So, I will tighten it over my implant. Okay? So, this is a healing cap. I'll open up the healing cap. This is my soft tissue emergence created around my implant i'll take an open tray impression post i'll place that open tray impression post over my implant now i'll take a plastic tray 
और जहां पर भी ये ओपन ट्रे इंप्रेशन पोस्ट था वहां पे से आई विल क्रिएट अ होल इन माई ट्रे सो आई क्रिएटेड दैट इज वाई दिस इज नोन एज ओपन ट्रे बिकॉज आई हैव ओपन माई ट्रे एग्जैक्टली फ्रॉम वेयर दैट इंप्रेशन पोस्ट इज कमिंग आउट ओके नाउ वॉट आई डू अच्छा नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दे आस्क Which is the ideal most material for making implant impressions? They may ask you this question: कि कौन सा material सबसे best है for making implant impressions? So the options could be alginate, the option could be C silicon, the option के can be A silicon, the option can be polyether. अगर ऐसे कुछ options हैं और आपको single answer choose करना है the best option is polyether. ठीक है बट अगर द ऑप्शन आर सी सिलिकॉन ए सिलिकॉन पॉलीथर डी बोथ बी एंड सी मतलब बोथ पॉलीथर एंड ए सिलिकॉन देन आंसर वुड बी डी बोथ पॉलीथर एंड ए सिलिकॉन ओके बट इफ यू हैव टू चूज सिंगल बेस्ट आंसर पॉलीथर सेकेंड बेस्ट आंसर ए सिलिकॉन यू डोंट प्रिफर सी सिलिकॉन और एल्जिनेट फॉर मेकिंग इम्प्लांट इंप्रेशन so if you get this mcq please remember the best answer is polyether and if both are the options then answer would be both polyether and a silicon okay so we'll take this plastic tray i'll insert inject that light body around that impression post <coughs> my assistant will mix the putty and give it to me in the tray and i'll insert that tray in the patient's mouth now if you can see this screw should be visible outside from in the patient's mouth through the tray jahan se humne tray ko open kiya tha wahan se wo screw visible hona chahiye patient ke oral cavity mein now once that tray uh, material has set so now the material is hard and it is set now what we will do is we'll take a hex driver and we'll unscrew this screw we'll unscrew this screw and we'll remove this tray when we remove this tray this impression post will be picked up inside the impression this impression post will be <coughs> picked up inside the impression so that is why this technique open tray because the tray is open is also known as pick up impression technique open tray impression technique is also known as pick up impression technique am i clear am i clear just reply yes if you are okay with me and the speed with which we are going is okay just reply yes okay so now once this impression is done i'll put the healing cap over the implant in the patient's mouth and i'll send my patient back home so this is open tray technique also known as pick up impression technique now the second impression technique was the close tray impression technique the second impression technique was the close tray so what is the difference close tray impression technique is like um it is like a uh, crown and bridge impressions so what do you do is you do a crown cutting in the patient's mouth you put some light body there you take a tray you put some putty there and you put that putty in the patient's mouth once that putty is set then uh, you remove that tray so this is how you do a crown and bridge impression okay so now in an closed tray impression technique which one is the closed tray this may we have used the closed tray impression post So this one is a closed tray impression post. So I'll take my closed tray impression post. Okay, I'll just go to the picture and I'll place that closed tray impression post over this implant with my hex driver. So tight, which I just said, is hex driver. See. So now I'll take a tray and it's closed tray. So I don't have to cut the tray from anywhere. I don't have to open it anywhere. So this is not. an open tray impression technique what is this this is a closed tray impression technique so i'll place that 
impression post over my implant i'll tighten it and i'll take a tray up i'll inject light body around my impression post my assistant will mix the putty and give it to me i'll insert that tray in my patient's mouth jaise hi material set hoga i'll remove that tray now what is the difference the tray in the impression post is still in patient's mouth i'll have to remove that impression post and i'll have to insert that impression post in the impression manually i have to insert that impression post in the impression manually means i have to transfer it so that is why this closed tray impression technique because the tray is closed is also known as transfer impression technique it is also known as transfer impression technique acha can you tell me now which is a better technique out of both of them open tray or closed tray a very common question that lot of time the examiner asks ki which of the impression technique is the most reliable and predictable impression technique for dental implants open tray or closed tray come on give me the answer open tray or closed tray yes come on answer perfect open tray so we know a open tray the impression post is picked up so it's more predictable okay so these are the impression techniques now because i have seen the examiners been asking lot of questions in implants uh, that generally are not very simple also so I, i'll go slightly more deeper into impressions because they may ask you that lot of time when there are more than one impression post one implant adjacent to each other means there could be two implants adjacent to each other three implants four implants five implants or even a full mouth so when there are then when there are more than one adjacent implants and you need to make an impression so there is a procedure that is known as splinting of the impression post so they may ask you two three questions in this that when do you require to splint the impression post matlab wo puch sakta hai kab aapko in impression post ko aapas mein jodne ki requirement hai so splinting of impression post is required when there are more than one adjacent implants theek hai and why it is required just think of a chair we suppose a chair it has four legs and if all the four legs like we see it in a chair are joined to each other they cannot move separately wo alag alag move nahi kar sakte so that is why a chair is cause the legs are splinted similarly if i am suppose making an impression for an implant jahan pe ek se zyada adjacent implants hai if i am not splinting them this is a elastomeric material whether it is polyether addition silicon it is an elastic material my impression post if during the impression even moved in microns my prosthesis my crown that will come will not seat over my implant so it is very important that when i am making an impression for my full for my implant adjacent implants multiple implants i always join them the impression post i always join them i always splint them the next question they may ask you agar ye picture aapko dikhti hai what is this just look for the option splinting of the impression post now they may ask you what is the advantage for increasing the accuracy of the impression <coughs> for increasing the accuracy of the impression this is used so can you see this red material they may ask you the next question what is it it is known as pattern resin it is known as a pattern resin so a pattern resin is something that is used for splinting of impression post now the next question he may ask you that why only pattern resin is used why not a flowable composite 
why not a uh, cold cure can be used for splitting of the impression post so all these materials composite cold cure have polymerization shrinkage and again other shrinkage hoga they will put pressure on the impression post and they cannot be used so that is why pattern resin as it has no polymerization shrinkage is preferred for splinting of the impression post so this is splinting of the impression post aisa kuch render it dikhe aapko impression post pe so this is they he may ask you the material material is pattern resin procedure is splinting of impression post and advantage is accuracy no movements now once this impression is done aap <coughs> healing cap laga ke patient ko to ghar bhej doge you will just have that impression now the next step is fabrication of the prosthesis now to fabricate any prosthesis you first need a working model now to fabricate a working model you need something that replicate an implant in the patient's mouth ab implant to patient ke sath gaya so now we need a replica a copy of the implant that works as an implant for the lab technician so that he can fabricate a crown over it so next component that you may require is known as a lab analog to agar ye picture aapko dikhta hai to dekh samajh jana hai kya hai this is a lab analog now he may ask you what is a lab analog so lab analog is basically implant replica implant ka an copy hai implant ka ek tarike se एक एक रिप्लिका है सो इट इज एम्प्लांट रिप्लिका सो नाउ वॉट द टेक्नीशियन विल डू जो आपने इंप्रेशन लिया था उस इंप्रेशन पोस्ट के ऊपर इस लैब एनालॉग को टाइट करेगा वो एंड हिल पोर द कस्ट सो नाउ दिस लैब एनालॉग ये जस्ट टू शो यू मैंने इस मॉडल को सेक्शन करा है आपको दिखाने के लिए कि लैब एनालॉग का क्या होता है सो दैट लैब एनालॉग विल एग्जैक्टली कम इन टू द सेम प्लेस where that implant is in patient's mouth so my working model like this is ready so this is lab analog in the cast and my working model is ready so what is a lab analog implant replica that is used for making a working model or which my lab technician can fabricate a prosthesis okay now once this model is ready the next thing that you may require is known as an abutment so what is an abutment an abutment is something that connects your implant to the crown an abutment is something that connects your implant to the crown so next is to choose a correct abutment <coughs> okay so you have basically two types of three types of abutment one is a straight abutment one is an angled abutment so if your implant is straight इन द बोन तो उसके ऊपर आपको जो अबर्टमेंट यूज करना है दैट इज अट्रेट अबर्टमेंट दिस एंगल्ड अबर्टमेंट द मैक्सिम परमिसिबल दर क्वेश्चन द मैक्सिम परमिसिबल एंगल फॉर एन इम्प्लांट इज सो द आंसर इज ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्रीज ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्रीज सो द मैक्सिम एंगल अबर्टमेंट दैट इज अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट इज अराउंड ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री सो एंगल अबर्टमेंट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्रीज ओके So now lab वाले क्या करेगा इस अबर्टमेंट को लेगा इस अबर्टमेंट को इस मॉडल पे टाइट कर देगा ठीक है इस पे टाइट कर देगा और उसके ऊपर वो आपको एक जिल्कोनिया या मेटल सिरामिक पीएफएफ का क्राउन बना के दे देगा आप क्या करोगे उस अबर्टमेंट को लोगे उस अबर्टमेंट को लेके यू विल जस्ट यू टेक दिस अबर्टमेंट एंड यू विल टाइटन दिस अबर्टमेंट ओवर द इम्प्लांट एंड यू विल सीमेंट दैट क्राउन ओवर माई ओवर दैट abutment so what i want to say whenever you will be using this straight or an angled abutment iske upar aap koi bhi crown bana do that crown would be cemented so the type of prosthesis over your cement retained over your straight abutment or an angled abutment will always be will always be cement retained will always be cement retained आप ऐसे बोल रहा हूं ध्यान से सुनना इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट द द टाइप ऑफ प्रोस्थेसिस दैट वुड बी प्लेस्ड ऑन द अबर्टमेंट और स्ट्रेट और एंगल वुड ऑलवेज बी अ सीमेंट रिटेन्ड क्राउन 
The third type of abutment is known as UCLA abutment because ये University of California में बना था इसलिए UCLA abutment or a plastic abutment also known as a castable abutment castable abutment okay now if you see this abutment ये नीचे से titanium का है ऊपर से plastic का है so इसकी casting हो सकती है तभी इसका नाम क्या है castable abutment so what the lab will do इससे जो prosthesis बनाएगा that is always screw retained prosthesis so what he can ask you in exam is so what is a एक तो ये picture पूछ सकता what is this so इस picture को देखते ही you have to tell that this is a UCLA or a plastic or a class castable abutment और इससे जब भी कोई भी crown या prosthesis बनेगा वो कौन सा बनेगा क्योंकि casting हो सकती है screw retained cement retained नहीं बनेगा इससे हमेशा prosthesis कैसा बनेगा screw retained okay तो इन दोनों से cement retained और UCLA से हमेशा screw retained. Am I clear? Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Now, if you see your abutment, a very very important point because now they are asking very deep and difficult questions and implants. So I am going into conceptual things that they may ask in exams. Okay. Now, if you see your abutment, this is your abutment. <clears throat> Can you see there are there there are there is it is hexagonal in shape, exactly like how the benzene ring is. So this your abutment is hexagonal. So your abutment can have this hex hexagonal shape, or it can be non-hex, means there is no hexagonal shape. It is round. Okay. So if your abutment does has hex. It is known as a hex type of abutment. If your abutment does not have a hex, it is known as a non-hex abutment. So all these abutments, UCLA can also be hex or non-hex. Or the straight or angled abutment can also be hex or non-hex. So hex or non-hex, two types of abutments. Now, when I make a single implant with a single crown, banaunga, I will always use an a Hex abutment. I'm repeating it again. When I, whenever I'll be making a single implant, single crown, I will always be using a hex abutment. But whenever there are multiple adjacent implants, or on sare multiple adjacent implants ka jo prosthesis banega, wo single splinted prosthesis hai. है ना तो वो अबटमेंट जो मेरे को यूज करना है हमेशा नॉन हेक्स होना चाहिए कभी भी हेक्स नहीं होना चाहिए तो हेक्स कब होगा जब सिंगल इंप्लांट सिंगल क्राउन सपोज आपका 3/6 में एक टूथ मिसिंग है आपने वहां एक इंप्लांट डाला उस पे एक क्राउन लगाना है योर अबटमेंट विल ऑलवेज बी हेक्स सपोज योर 3/6 एंड 3/7 बोथ आर मिसिंग सो यू हैव प्लेस टू इंप्लांट्स 3/6 एंड 3/7 ओके टू इंप्लांट्स और उन पे आप जॉइंट क्राउन्स दे रहे हो तो आपका अबटमेंट हमेशा नॉन हेक्स होगा एम आई क्लियर सो ही मे गिव यू दिस पिक्चर और पूछ सकता है इसमें से हेक्स अबटमेंट कौन सा है नॉन हेक्स कौन सा अ वेरी वेरी अगेन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट हेक्स अबटमेंट इज आल्सो नोन एज एंगेजिंग टाइप ऑफ अबटमेंट हेक्स अबटमेंट इज आल्सो नोन एज एंगेजिंग टाइप ऑफ अबटमेंट नॉन हेक्स अबटमेंट is also known as non engaging type of abutment non hex is also known as non engaging type of abutment so engaging and non engaging are the same names for hex and non hex exactly so hex is engaging non hex is non engaging so in short implant abutment that is tightened with the screw and a crown over it and a crown over it okay so abhi maine aapko jo bataya there are two types of crowns one is cement retained in which first the abutment is tightened over the implant first the abutment is tightened over the implant and then the crown is cemented over the abutment then the crown is cemented over the abutment so this is cement retained crown 
द स्क्रू रिटेन क्राउन इज जब वो क्राउन पूरा एक स्क्रू से टाइट हो रहा है दिस इज स्क्रू रिटेन क्राउन सीमेंट रिटेन एंड स्क्रू रिटेन सो जब भी मैं स्ट्रेट या एंगल डबटमेंट यूज करूंगा मेरा क्राउन हमेशा क्या बनेगा सीमेंट रिटेन एंड जब भी मैं यूसीएल अबटमेंट यूज करूंगा माई प्रोस्टाइस विल ऑलवेज बी स्क्रू रिटेन क्राउन so whenever i am using ucla abutment my prosthesis will always be a screw retained crown am i clear is it clear to everyone so straight and angled abutment will help us to fabricate cement retained and ucla will help us to fabricate a screw retained crown okay so you take this hex driver to tighten this implant to tighten this abutment or this abutment over the implant is it clear am i clear so what i had discussed today are all the components regarding the implant okay in the next session i would be discussing more about the type of implant surgeries and the principle of implant surgeries and the planning okay so i'll be taking around 3 to 4 sessions and i'll be covering all of all the things that you should know about implants okay so thank you so much for tonight see you soon good night study well